I can't wait for BYU to say we only lost by five to Coastal Carolina. <laughs> to future national championship shot the cleanest. Hey, look, as I'm saying, like if you if BYU's really about it, they're gonna put up the the national runner up on their chest. That's what they're gonna do. National runners up. We lost to the national champions. <laughs> I don't want it that bad. I don't want it that bad. I do want a Coastal Carolina National Championship shirt, though. I want Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I need it. Yeah. Con- Con- Conway Roosters, damn it. That's the story. <laughs> I had dudes in here, like, in the lead up, because, like, somebody asked me in the comments, RJ, could you please do a, a preview of BYU Coastal Carolina? And I'm like, fine, whatever. And I, I go at it. I get shot to clear fans in the chat and in the comments talk about is shots. It's a it's a it's a AU sound. First of all, the word is shanty clear, and it is from Chaucer. Okay? It is the King's English. Oh Lord. <laughs> Second of all, just because it made its way to the South and y'all won y'all little baseball Nash championship, don't mean you get to start uh, coming in here correcting my diction because I don't have any drawl. In my shanty clears, okay. You lucky that I don't just come out here and call them the fighting rockadoodles, because that's what I want to do. RJ is the type of dude to be looking at Shakespeare in the park in Starkville and being like, "Can't believe it." It's, they butchering him. Look, he but, already did. I don't know why you got to murder him. But dude, it's C H N T I C L E E R. Shan T clear. There's no ah in there. Shots. I hate shots, shots up. No man. That look. feels good. Oh my god. Plus, you are you are some roosters just just down the road for some gamecocks. Have we thought about that? Like, I'm sure oh, somebody no, thought like, about that. I was about to say this is one of those where the uh, fiction gets kicked back or like the reality gets kicked back because you wrote that into a, a screenplay. No, I can't have that. Are you sure Perfect. South Carolina Perfect. Gamecocks and Coastal Carolina Chanticleers? Are you sure? I mean, I, I left some Tigers in here. We got Clemson. We got Tigers in Clemson. No? Y'all don't like that? Oh, that reminds me. What's South Carolina State's mascot? Man, I should know this. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm going to get research on this right quick. Uh, because, like, the last time I was talking about South Carolina State was actually earlier this year. Bulldogs! That's who they are. Uh, but I was talking about Darius Leonard. Is it right? Who is where did Darius Leonard go to school? Oh uh, yeah. Where where did Darius Leonard go to school? Where did Tariq Cohen go to school? Yeah, where did Tariq Cohen go to school? Yeah, these are all real good questions. <laughs> y'all, y'all gonna tell me all about these dudes that came out of West Georgia and Georgia State. Can't tell me where some of these dudes come from. All right, whatever. Um, where else did I want to go with this? Because we got like little bit of time left. All right, let me check the chat to see what, what y'all are talking about because I know y'all are having conversations among yourselves. Uh... So while you're looking, I wanted to, I wanted to point out the Please. don't talk to me about sports before integration. Oh. Uh, so j- this is just a small thing, just one thing. Please. Is that uh, if that's the case, then we got to we gotta talk about the, the Yankees 27 championships actually just being 17. I mean... Still pretty good, but what do you call an integration? Are you calling forty seven integration? I'm getting, I'm putting it at forty seven. Okay, I, I mean that's where that's where a lot of people put it. But I'll put, that's where I'm putting it. I okay? prefer to think of it as the last time that the Negro Leagues decided to play a baseball season. Hmm. Hmm. Also, you know, uh, I didn't put that re- research in. Uh, <laughs> just. <laughs> You know me. I love baseball, right? I'm the I'm the college football guy, but I love baseball. And like, here's a research project for anybody that wants to do it because I did it and it's so much fun. Check out the Don Newcomb Willie Mays All Stars. It is perhaps the finest collection of talent ever. It's Don Newcomb. It's Willie Mays. It's man. It's can't. I don't want to tell y'all who's on this team. I just remember looking at this team going. Oh, so this is what the Monstars would look like. Like, you go down the list, Hall of Famer. 
Like they are quite literally just destroying people, you know, to make a little money. And they're selling out games in such a way that they're holding games up by like two hours so that they can get all the people in the stands in like Longview, Texas. Let me see. Uh, Bernard Schurman asks, how would Luke Fickle do at Texas putting defense in the Big 12? You act like we ain't been playing defense this year. Did you see Oklahoma the last like six games? They haven't allowed more than 28 points play, uh, to be scored since the Texas game, and that's four overtimes. They're absolutely destroying people. They held Oklahoma State to 13. They held Baylor to 14. They held Kansas to 9, right? I, I resent that because that's no longer true. Also, look at what Iowa State did to West Virginia. I, West Virginia scored six points, all right? But to answer your question, Luke Fickle is a, is a Northeastern dude. I don't see him wanting to come this far south because the recruiting region just changes. That dude coached at Ohio State, was a head coach at Ohio State, has a defensive coordinator that went to Ohio State. Like, that's who they are. They are Ohio. And since he's not going to take the Michigan job, you just kind of stand there and wait for P.J. Fleck to flame out, I guess. Right? You know? Or wait for Pat Narduzzi to get up out of Pittsburgh. You know? Like, there's not a whole bunch of places that for him to go. Like, his name doesn't even pop up in the South Carolina search. Because it's understood. You know, we got all these dudes from the South that are popping up. Like Shane Beamer ends up in South Carolina because he had more or less begun his coaching career there. Like after Va Tech, I think it's the first stop that he made and he coached for Spurrier for years. Beloved down there. Telling stories about watching his kids go hunt Easter eggs on the field. You know, and he's talking about my, my kids were so young and now they're like 12. That That's he views that place as home, and they view that view him as coming home. That's not what Luke Fickle would be doing in Texas or Mississippi or Louisiana or Florida, for that matter. I just don't see it, dog. Like, Dan Mullen is a Southeastern Conference coach in the way that Kirby Smart is a Southeastern Conference coach. So when y'all tell me stuff like Luke Fickle to Texas, I don't think y'all are actually paying attention. It's like saying, what if Kirby Smart coached Michigan? What? No, like the only dude that can make that leap is James Franklin. That's because James Franklin can coach East Coast, West Coast, South, wherever. Like we've been talking about James Franklin, not just to Penn State and Vandy, but as a dude that could go at USC and Texas. Because James Franklin cuts all the ways America does. All the ways. And there's only a handful of coaches that can pull that off. And guess what? Those dudes have jobs and they don't want to go anywhere else. It should tell you everything that Nick Saban is one of the only dudes in the modern era to go from the north to the south and make it work. You know, think about it in, in these terms. Mac Brown has two places that he really loved to coach. Okay? They are this southeastern region and this place that thinks it's the southeast. North Carolina and or Oklahoma, Texas. And you can throw Iowa State in there if you want to, but he wasn't there for very long. Matter of fact, Tom Herman called Iowa State Siberia. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll, I'll tell this story right quick. Get your reaction to the story. Tom Herman takes over the Texas job in 2017. Goes to talk to University of Houston business students in 2017. And he was talking about how he didn't make more than $40,000 in a year until he turned 32. Like it was some sort of feat. No, man, I, I, didn't, I didn't make that kind of money either. But I'm not, I'm not making $5 million either. All right. Um, and I'm 33. That's his way of getting into it ain't about money and you're going to have to work your way up. And the way he decided to describe working his way up was talking about coaching at Iowa State and how he came up. I coached at FCS, I coached at Rice, and I coached at Iowa State. He coached at Texas State, Sam Houston State, Rice, and Iowa State. So it ain't like, you know, my man was living in some areas that are some, somewhere out in the hinters. He can coach in Montana. He ain't coaching Bozeman. It's not what he did. Let's talk about Ames, Iowa, though. You said anybody been to Ames? Ames, Iowa? Yeah. I did a three-year sentence in Ames. Siberia. Yeah. Yeah. And then caught an L to Siberia in back-to-back -back years. And I really want somebody to check me on the math on this one, but I do believe this is the first time in Texas school history that the University of Texas football team has lost to Iowa State and Texas Christian in back-to-back -back years. They are 0-4 against Iowa State and Texas Christian in 2019 and 2020. 
That's a, that's a big, uh, congratulations, Iowa State, for uh, lifting up the positioning of your program. Dude points out Urban Meyer also went north to south. Yeah, Bowling Green State. Yeah, 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 my bad. Mike, you good. But you, again, a handful Andy. of dudes. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Andy also spent time in the mountains. Like he Utah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Bowling Green State. He made Bowling Green State like a name. Who does that? I didn't care about the Falcons. I I didn't I haven't cared about the Falcons since. Like it, it was Bowling Green State when he coached there. Yeah, I could, I, I could name what Jacob Harris. That's a, that's about the beginning and end of my Bowling Green knowledge. Man, you know, and I think about them. I think, I don't think about them. Like I think about other teams at Ohio. <laughs> I think about Toledo. I think about Cincy, of course. I think about um, Miami of Ohio. Yeah, I don't think about Bowling Green at all, ever. I didn't even think about Akron because they suck. A lot of those programs get a, a lot of uh, have had a lot of play. I'm not saying necessarily football, but those schools in that state have done a lot of good things. Like, mm -hmm. Ohio, stop me if this is hot take. I think Ohio might be a hotbed of talent. I think they might be talent rich. Wow. Yeah, some 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 have said some have said. Uh. All right, I appreciate y'all for coming through. Uh, Ron, thanks so much for doing this with me, man. Uh, it's, oh, more, it's more fun when we're talking. Uh, wow. Wow. You're so sweet. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, subscribe to the RJ Young Show podcast where you can listen to this ad-free because, you know, apparently uh, I'm still looking for people that want to do business. And, you know, like how we could do the fake ad reads again, might actually do those like on like when we get the ads back, probably do the fake ad reads just to keep everybody on their toes because that was fun. Um, check out my piece on foxsports.com about Ohio State and its culture and ahead of the Michigan game. And uh, we'll see y'all in a couple hours. Deuces.